Good morning, colleagues. Ms. Martin has placed the Padded link in the chat. You can click on it. I just posted the Padded link in the chat. And we're answering the question, what is your major concern about teaching language arts virtually? And you're encouraged to respond to any other posts that you may see. Good morning to my colleagues just joining. Please click on the padded link to write in what your concerns are in regards to teaching language arts virtually. A pleasant good morning, grade three teachers. I am Thea Storr, a third grade teacher at the great E.P. Roberts Primary School. Welcome, welcome, welcome to this language arts session, where you will be shown strategies to virtually teach language arts, presented with ways to holistically teach the five components of reading and given tips to integrate grammar, spelling, and handwriting to improve students' writing skills. Our presenters for this session are Mrs. Conliff and Ms. Martin, both education officers attached to the learning resources section. Please place any questions that you may have for our presenters in the question and answer box. Without further ado, let's turn it over to Mrs. Conliff and Ms. Martin. Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here with you today. Welcome to the session, Making the Language Arts Connect. I am Mrs. Cornliffe, and today we will be looking at realistic, relevant, and reproducible strategies for the virtual classroom. Teachers, we hope that the information shared today will assist you in one, developing digital reading lessons to support all learners, and two, producing writing lessons, integrating grammar, handwriting, and spelling skills. Research tells us that the literacy knowledge and skills developed in first grade through third grade predict later literacy achievement. We know that the components of the language arts curriculum consist of the reading, which includes phonemic awareness, phonics, fluency, comprehension, and vocabulary. Then we have the written composition, spelling, grammar, handwriting, and listening and speaking. We are all aware that classroom instruction can have an enormous impact on the development of literacy, knowledge, and skills, whether we are teaching face-to-face -face or virtually. When we think about instruction, we know that effective instruction should be explicit and systematic. Explicit instruction means that it is clear and direct as we ensure that students are understanding what we teach through frequent checks for understanding. We also ensure that there's active participation, which leads to success for all students. When we think about systematic instruction, your skills are logically sequenced. We are building on students' prior knowledge, and we proceed in manageable steps. Also, effective instruction can include you, the teacher providing corrective feedback and behavior specific praise. Even though 
We may be operating differently for right now. Remember, it is all about the instruction we provide to our students. Now we're going to take a look at the reading component of the language arts curriculum in the virtual classroom. As reading lessons are developed throughout the week, we need to ensure that the components, again, are phonemic awareness, the phonics, fluency, and vocabulary are present. We all know that the bottom line of interaction with any text is comprehension, meaning that when we read, we read to understand. We also know that there are many purposes for reading. We know that reading is a form of communication. We learn to read information or facts. Reading is to reading is used, sorry, to entertain and we understand other cultures or groups from reading. Ms. Martin will now share a few strategies to assist you with the delivery of instruction in the virtual setting. Good morning, everyone. I trust that you're all well. Now, I know, I know, I know it's going to be difficult to transition from face to face to the virtual, but the first thing we have to consider is our schedule. How many periods are allotted for language arts? What times of day are we going to have these periods um, scheduled for? How long will each of these sessions be? Um, I know that is the first thing that we have to consider. Let's look at the face-to-face -face timetable. We know that there is a 40 period week in terms of our timetable that we had face-to-face. -face. Of those 40 periods, 21 of those periods are allocated for the language arts. 10 for reading, five for written composition, two for grammar, handwriting, spelling, we all know. And those of you that are new, that are new to third grade or lower primary, welcome. Now, our subject allocations, our periods, are the time allotted for contact. We've not made, officially, we've not made changes to the periods. However, don't, don't panic yet, don't panic. However, however, the change or the adjustment to our schedule is going to come by way of the time on task, how we deal with our students, how we interact with our students. No, we're not telling you 90 minutes of your students sitting in front of you and you just lecturing them for 90 minutes or you're talking to them and you're trying to get them to talk to you. It's difficult for you to maintain their attention and they're in front of you. So this virtual environment is going to force us to change the way that we see things, the way that we teach. Time on task is going to be the order of the day. The first option, now we have come up with three options. Notice what they're called, options. Things for you to try. It's a learning process, it's organic. And we're learning just as you're learning and we're trying to see which ways we can suggest you to make life a bit easier. Research has told us that for um, younger children, our live instruction, which is where the students and the teachers are online at the same time, it should be no longer than 20 minutes, 25 max, because of their attention span. And within these live instructions, that's where the teacher would actually teach a lesson or his lesson, share the screen, and then we have the students give feedback. It can be, and your live instructions can be where you connect your phonics and your phonemic awareness components of the language arts, or you connect your vocabulary and comprehension components, or you teach the comprehension component. After your live instruction then, we have our breakout groups. Our breakout groups are gonna be where we have groups of 10 or 15. And again, we may be using Teams or Zoom, whichever interactive platform we're using. And we know that it's in Zoom, I'm more familiar with Zoom at this point. There are about 25 max screens that you can see. So we actually want to interact and engage with our students we can't have more than 25 at a time. Now, this would have to be something that we work along with and we may have to do some scheduling issues if we want to have that interaction. That, again, a suggestion. Our breakout groups can then reflect a portion of our class, 10 or 15 or five students, depending on what you want to do. And you're actually applying those concepts that you would have shown them so you can be interacting with them with the game or they can have a timed um, um, form or 
activity that they're going to complete within this five or 10 minute period. So you're actually there with them. That's one option. Option two is where we're going to sign in or tune into a live lesson that may be um, by your team. You may say, okay, this teacher is stronger in phonics. This one is stronger in comprehension. We can have a live lesson, a 20 minute lesson or 15 minute live lesson where all of us are tuned in, in our classrooms. Then we break out into smaller groups, which is our various, our individual classrooms. And now I'm gonna continue the reading block. I'm gonna, if the phonics was taught in that large group, or we all tune into this one teacher, now in my class, we're gonna focus on the comprehension and the vocabulary portion. And we can rotate it that way. Yes, I know some of you may not want to go on camera, but we all have to. We all have to step out of our comfort zones. I know you don't like it, but you know, we gotta, we gotta rise to the location. After we would have had our individual class um, sessions, we would then have a, a component or a section. Remember, we can only have so much at a time. We can have independent practice, which is where we would use lessons that are already pre-recorded, either by your team of teachers or someone in your school, or you can go to the content library and you can pull a video. Again, if we're gonna create videos, let me push a, put this plug in here. No more than 10 minutes, ladies, gentlemen. Our videos should not be dissertations, 20 minutes, half an hour, no. Short, to the point, concise. Let them watch a video, then complete an activity. That's your independent practice. Now, I hope that part is clear, option two. Now, option three is where we, we thought about our brothers and sisters in those classrooms where we have multi-grades. How are we going to do all of this? Or if it's one teacher at each at that grade level, she really doesn't, she or he doesn't have to support all that team to feed off of. So we can have the first half of your, let's say your morning, you can have a live instruction with the grade one. I'm thinking about the multi-level class now. And while grade one is in session with you, your grade twos are actually having a pre-recorded lesson. It can be the flip the next day, pre-recorded lesson and then an activity. So it's almost uh, allowing the teacher to engage with all of his students or his students, but we're having it in a planned, structured approach. Again, these are not static. These are not set in stone that you have to do it this way. These are mere options, alternatives, or suggestions. They can also be done in the face-to-face -face environment. Um, it's just gonna require a bit of tweaking, but planning is the order of the day. Time on task, making sure whatever interaction we have with our students, be it five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, it counts. We get what we need. Notice the fluency component. It's not suggested here in terms of actual teaching, but fluency is what they do. We can assign them fluency activities throughout the week. We can have word drills. They can have a passage that encompasses the phonetic words with the phonetic scale, their side words or vocabulary, and they're reading this passage daily. At the end of the week, they can send you a recording of them actually reading this passage, or we can have a one-on-one -on -one session, which leads us to our next slide, which are modes of delivery of instruction. Now, considerations should be for the amount of students that you have in your class that you're trying to reach, the age of the students that you're teaching, and also when we think about um, our demographic, what, what with students, if we look at the amount of students we have online at a time, uh, and all of that, all of these are considerations. Again, it's organic, it's constantly changing. The first thing is a live instruction, teacher and students online, similar to what we have going on now, live instruction, but I'm not seeing your lovely faces. Then we have independent practice, which is where we would utilize a pre-recorded lesson it can be something that you find on YouTube. It can be something that one of your colleagues created that we have in the content library. And I'll push a plug here. We have lessons already prepared for the first six weeks. One, talk, one lesson per topic for the first six weeks of school. So we, we have a jump start in all of the language art, arts areas. And you can provide that lesson and then have an activity associated with that lesson. That's your independent practice, small groups. Again, it goes based on the number of students you have in your class. You can have five, 10, four, three, it varies. And the teacher and those students are interacting because we have some students that will not be where they should be. 
agreeing to work with them in smaller groups. You can schedule the time. Enrichment is simply where our students are gonna apply the skills that you've taught them in real life contexts. It can be where we would have taught them words for the family. Take pictures of the family labeling each member and submit your, your um, digital photo album. And that's an enrichment they're associating the words now with the actual people. It's simply taking the content now to real life. Tutoring, it is what it is, one-on-one -on -one or no more than one to three. And these are various options that you have and modes of delivery of instruction. Teachers, as you think about the modes of delivery of instruction, when we think about the integration of the reading components within the language arts, we know that the connection can be easily done. Let's look at phonics and spelling. Your spelling words for the week should be reflective of the phonetic skills for the week. For example, if you're teaching long vowel I in phonics, then your spelling words should be words with long I. You may wish to add some story words or words from other content areas. Example, maybe a math vocabulary to your list but the majority of your words should reflect the phonetic skill of long I. Remember comprehension should happen through the reading of a story along with passages reflective of vocabulary, of vocabulary words. Students are learning to practice a given comprehension skill. Skills should not just be drilled but there needs to be time for students to apply the skills. The phonemic awareness should include the phoneme for the phonetic skill or review of sounds taught and can easily be integrated within the phonic part of the lesson. Now teachers, you're not left on your own. Presenting here is the pacing guide for you to follow. We would just like to say that the topics and content for the language arts come from the language arts curriculum guide. Remember that planning is very essential and that the sequence of skills are followed as presented. Also, remember that the other resources that you use are supplementary to the ministry's language arts curriculum. Now, how can virtual instruction look? We know that some of you, at least for most of us, we are stepping into uncharted territory. But we'd just like to share a lesson that was created for this school term with you. And I want you to notice the integration here that the, that the teacher is portraying in the lesson. Hello, boys and girls. Can you think of your favorite story? It may have been a read or one someone read aloud to you. In today's lesson, we're going to discover what stories are made of. Are you ready to learn? Let's begin. Sorry. Three elements can be found in fiction books, which are made up stories created from an author's imagination. They are the parts that make up or build a story. Every fiction story has the same key elements. They are characters, setting, problem, solution, and theme. The two story elements we will be learning more about are characters and setting. Characters tell us who or what the story is about. They are the main figures that move the story along. 
characters can be people. For example, stories can be about superheroes, a boy, girl, giant, or even a detective or ballerina. Characters can be animals, like a fish, a crab, a pig, bird, or turtle. Characters can be things like a robot, a furry monster, a talking car, an airplane, or pineapple. Characters think, act, and feel. They perform the actions, have conversations, and experience different emotions. They can be happy, angry, or sad. Let's look at another story element, the setting. It is where or when the story takes place. The setting can be a place like the beach, a classroom, a house, or a forest. It can also be the time of day. For example, a story may take place in the morning or at nighttime. The setting can also be a moment in history, like the past, present, or future. Let's practice. Read each group of words. Do they describe a character or setting? Number one, a dark, cold night. Is that a character? or setting. If you said setting, you are correct. Can you tell me why you said setting? Yes, a dark cold night is the time of day. And we know that setting tells us the time of day. Let's read together. Number two, Oscar the fish. Is that a character or a setting? Oscar the fish is a character. Well done, boys and girls. Okay, I'll they skip it. Character a bit. to the future. In a moment, they'll open the gate, find out the character and setting in each one. Take a moment to pause and read each passage, then answer the questions that follow. Passage one, Daniel opened the gate to his neighbor's garden. He was surprised to see so many different kinds of plants growing in one place. He quickly took out his camera and started taking pictures for his science project. Who is the character? What is the setting? Let's check the answers for passage one. Who is the character? Daniel is the character. If you got that, that is excellent, boys and girls. What is the setting? The setting is neighbor's garden. Well done. Now, teachers, you notice in that lesson that <clears throat> the teacher, she portrayed guided practice, plus she did independent practice. And this is something that we are encouraging you to also include in your lessons as you develop your reading lessons, please, virtually. Now, we're going to look at some interactive websites that you can utilize. <clears throat> 
Okay, I know you're wondering how am I going to get all of these things done in this virtual environment and this is all new. It's all new to all of us, but there are some things that have already been created out there. We don't need to work hard on let's just work smarter and utilize what is already there. Now, here are a few suggestions. We can use a digital whiteboard. We can use this by way of this free app, whiteboard.fi. There's a UFLI, University of Florida Literacy Institute. They have a teaching resource hub. It is awesome. When I say awesome features, awesome. Lessons are already created, PowerPoints already created. All you have to do is download them and tweak them to your various um, lessons. And you can take however, how much you want, how little you want. Now we have online games. We all know about those. Our digital worksheets now. Our digital worksheets, we can utilize the online, the Office 365 forms. And I'll show you that in a minute. Then we also have online libraries that are free, like epic.com, books.com. The students can listen to the stories. We realize this component when our students are having difficulty reading or applying their comprehension skill. We can actually let them listen to a story and answer the questions, or we can ask some questions based on that. Then we have readworks.org. I love, love, love readworks.org. The passages there are free. They are graded at the various grade levels. If you have lower level readers or you have non-readers, they have passages from kindergarten straight up to grade eight, I think. So it's in line with all of our grade levels. Padlet, which is what you used at the ons at the opening. And I love some of your concerns. Some of you are concerned about adjusting the, um, your lessons to maintain the student's interest. And if we keep our activities engaging, no, we won't have them sitting there for the full hour and, ten, and 20 minutes or so. But um, if we can do little things to keep them entertained, if we're getting, getting feedback, let's say you ask a question, you can, we're probably doing phonics and our skill is long I, as Ms. Collins would have mentioned. You give a, a, word, a sound or you sound out a word and whoever writes it down and shows it on their camera first, you get instant feedback. You know, okay, little Shaquanda, she needs help. She doesn't, she can't differentiate long eye from short eye. Or if you're sounding out a word, you want them to tell you what it is, raise your hands or just unmute the mic. Those are ways that we can keep them within this 20 minute period now engaged. Padlet and then we all know Kahoot. Now I'll show you a few of them and time is of the essence. So quickly, this is Ginzy or Ginzy.com. Free, it has a free aspect. When you sign up for it, this is the interface that you're gonna see. And these are actually lessons or templates of lessons that you as the teacher you can select from. They have a library and it's listed by way of the subjects. And all you have to do is type in up here what you're looking for. Handwriting, we know that handwriting is going to be a task. We still have to teach it though. They have a handwriting component. You can select the letter that you wanna teach. And then there's a lesson that goes along with it, which is a, um, here, the example is right here. This is a little video that you're gonna click on and they're gonna watch the letter being formed. Then they can choose from the pencil icon down here and they can actually practice writing it. This can be done on the regular computer, laptop, or tablet. So this is one of those ways that we can have, and again, we're gonna be making the connections with the language arts. Handwriting has to be taught. Whiteboard.fi, you can go, again, it's free. I know I'm going pretty, going pretty fast, but these are things that we can go through, but I just wanna share with you. The, you can make your own class. You start a new class, and once you started the new class, you'll see this interface here. Up here is the room code. That's what you would give your students, or you would post it in your lessons, or how, wherever you put it. Once they get into the room, you'll see all of their names listed here on this dashboard. Then, as the teacher, you can create a little whiteboard activity. You can type in a sentence, or you yourself can write it. You can post a picture, and you can ask them now, once you push the whiteboard to them, they can in turn select the pencil, pencil tool and they can write or they can type when they insert the text. And you can also choose the options for them to upload a picture on their whiteboard. So it's again an interface to maintain interaction with you and your students within your lessons. It's doable. It may be difficult, but it's doable. 
as mentioned before, the connection of the skills across the language arts are the desired way to teach. Even though we may introduce grammar and spelling skills within their time allocations on the timetable, our writing lessons should reflect the skills being taught in these areas. Remember, handwriting is connected to all areas because students write in all areas. Focus needs needs to be given to the correct formation of letters, spacing of words, etc. As you look at this image being portrayed here, you can easily see connections being made. The composition topic is all about me, but the writing skill here is now narrowing ideas. In grammar for the week, we're teaching what is a sentence, so we know students are going to be writing sentences. But even if you have a student who is unable to write sentences, you can have that student create an audio recording and submit it to you, the teacher. Spelling and vocabulary words for the week can be used in the sentences. And then again, attention would be given to the formation of letters and the spacing of words for the handwriting. Now we're going to take a look at a virtual writing lesson and a grammar lesson to be taught virtually. Okay. We're only going to show a portion of both. And these will be available in your content library. I am your teacher, Mistress Lorraine Minnis. Do you know what time it is? It's time for grammar. Today, we will be learning about sentences. Do you know what is a sentence? Come with me and let's find out together. Objectives. At the end of the lesson, students will be able to, one, define the word sentence, two, distinguish between a sentence and a fragment. Okay, boys and girls, let's begin by reading this nursery rhyme, The Itsy Bitsy Spider. The Itsy Bitsy Spider climbed up the water spout and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. Climbed up the spout again. It seems as though something is wrong with some of the sentences in this nursery rhyme. Do you know what is a sentence? Let's find out together. Come with me. What is a sentence? A sentence is a group of words that makes sense or expresses a complete thought. Example, my dog likes to run and play. More facts about a sentence. A sentence begins with a capital letter. A sentence ends with an N mark. A sentence has at least one verb in it. The words in a sentence must be in the correct order. If your sentence does not include all of these things, it is not a sentence. It is a fragment. Now that we know all about a sentence, let's take another look at the nursery rhyme. The first sentence says, the itsy bitsy spider climbed up the water spout. Do you think that is a sentence? If you 
said yes, then you are correct. Why is it a sentence? It is a sentence because it begins with a capital letter, it ends with an N mark, it has a verb in it, and it makes sense. Now, let's take a look at the second sentence. It says, and wash the spider out. Do you think that this is a complete sentence? Well, it begins with a capital letter and it ends with an N mark, but does it make sense? No, it does not. A part of the sentence is missing. It does not state who or what washed the spider out. This okay, so that's the grammar. And this is a writing uh, lesson. I know many of you had questions or concerns about writing. Here is a sample of a writing lesson. Do you look like this when your teacher says it's time for story writing? Well, let that be a thing of the past. Welcome to written composition, the place where you become real writers. Today's lesson, writing ideas. Oops, <laughs> there I am. I forgot to introduce myself. My name is Miss Alexis Gardner, and I am your teacher for today. I cannot let you go any further without telling you what you're going to learn today. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to, one, define the word idea, two, display ideas using a graphic organizer, and three, construct sentences using your ideas. Listen, guys, I am so excited. Can't you feel the excitement? I'm ready to sing. I'm ready to dance, but I won't. <laughs> Instead, I'll say, let's go to the next slide. I bet I know what you're thinking. What is an idea? Well, an idea is a thought. It comes to your mind after you see or hear something. Every story begins with an idea. I believe in every boy and girl is a good story. You may start off looking like this. What to write? What to write? Oh my gosh, what to write? Then suddenly you have idea after idea after idea popping up in your mind and you don't know what to do with them all. Well, I have some advice for you. To write a good story, you should brainstorm your ideas first. This means write down what you want to talk about in the story. Now, I'm going to share my secret weapon with you. This is what I use when I want to brainstorm. It's called a graphic organizer. A graphic organizer helps us to organize our thoughts. Here's how it looks. In the middle of the graphic organizer, there is a circle for your topic. And then in each circle around it, you can put a different idea that you want to include in your story. Let's move on and I'll show you how it's done. Here is our story prompt. Write a story telling about a day you spent at the park. Don't you just love the park? It's one of my most favorite places to go. Now, where did that graphic organizer go? Oh, there it is. Well, now I get to show you how I use my secret weapon. Now, let's talk about what we do first. First, we need a title. The title of our story goes in the middle circle. 
My title is A Day at the Park. Now, to fill out the other circles, I have to write down all the ideas that I want to include in my story. What I may see, or what I may hear, or what I may do at the park. Well, I know for sure we play at the park, so I want the word play. I also want the word fun. What do we see at the park? Let's look at the picture to help us. You guessed it, we see swings. And what's next to that swing? You got it, a slide. What else can we include in our story about the park? Think about the parks that you went to. Ooh, I have a great one. My nephew is afraid of these monkey bars. Now, now that I have all of the things I want to write about, let's go make those sentences. So far, we have looked at the meaning of the word idea, we've looked at the graphic organizer, and we've learned how to fill in a graphic organizer. I think I'm doing a great job, don't you think? Now, let's go to constructing sentences. Construct is just a big word for create. That means we're going to create sentences using the words from the graphic organizer. Now, where did that graphic organizer go? Yoo-hoo! Oh, there it is. Now, here's a fresh sheet of paper. Let's begin by putting the title at the top of the page. A day at the park. Now it's time to change these words into sentences. What is the first word I'm going to use? Play. My sentence is, I played at the park. What's our next word? Fun. Lots of fun. Oh, there goes swings. I guess that's the sentence that's next. I played on the swings. Slide. Let's construct a sentence using slide. I played on the slide too. And that last sentence is going to be with the monkey bars. I even climbed on the monkey bars. Don't you see how we are building our story? First, we took all of those ideas, placed them in an organizer, and changed them into sentences. Let's see what happens next. Okay. All right, colleagues. I know, I know it may not be at all levels that you may have to start off with creating the sentences. However, it's just a sample. And like Mr. Skondo said, we're not leaving you on your own. It's, and if you have a lesson already done, you can share it as well. But before we end our session, we just wanna give you a few key points from everything that we would have shared. Integrate, integrate your skills. Integrate the, the skills as much as possible, the components of language arts as much as possible. And use the scope and sequence. The scope and sequence for language arts is available on the ministry's website and you can download it or you can reference it. The national pacing guide is also going, it's also being made available to you. And this is a reflection of the scope and sequence. Don't depend on the internet. Don't depend on a book. Thankfully, we don't have workbooks, so you can't depend on that. So we have to use the national guide. Ensure that your lessons are student-centered. Yes? We have to be comfortable, but at the end of the day, we have to ensure that it's about the students gaining understanding from what we would have shared. And also teamwork. Teamwork makes a dream work. If I've learned nothing else in this COVID-19 period, I've learned that it's not all about me. It's not um, everything I know. I had to depend and learn to pull on the strengths of others. And if someone else has something already done, why should I have to go do it? Just ask them for it and utilize it. So if you have a lesson that's already created and you wanna share it with us, send it to us. We'll be glad to share it with your colleagues. Teamwork makes the dream work. And if, and we're gonna open it up for questions. And if for whatever reason you want to reach us, here are our email addresses. And we thank you for your time, your attention. 
And we're going to turn it back over to the moderator who is going to field our questions. Ms. Dora? Thank you. So we have several people wanting to know if the presentation can be sent by email. We can. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay, so for those who are interested, you can send Ms. Martin or Ms. Conniff an email and then they will respond to you with the presentation attached. Yes, ma'am. We also have here from Ms. Melody Newbold. Do you have anything on integration for lower students? Meaning um, lessons? Yes, that's what I'm getting. Um, when we think about the lessons that we have so far, we're start, trying to start from the basics and then um, move on to the other skills as they should be taught. But if you feel as though what's being offered for third grade, your students are not benefiting your students, then we will share with you what we have for second grade or even first grade if your students need something at that level. Thank you. Ms. Curtis just asked, where can we find the resource folder with videos like the sample to use? Okay, um, in the learning management system one-on-one, -on -one, I think the technology team would have had a few sessions or um, snip short videos, but in the learning management system, we will have a content library at each grade level and all teachers will have access to the content library. Within the content library, it, the, it'll be um, labeled by the week or by a particular skill or topic and you can pull from that in that content library videos or, or that we would have already uploaded. So all of the lessons that you saw today are going to be a part of that content library. And this is only going to be available in the learning management system of one-on-one. -on -one. Last, when we had the virtual learning platform, all of the lessons that were submitted were converted to YouTube videos. And you can find those lessons by way of the Bahamas virtual school or virtual school Bahamas um, on YouTube. So you have options via YouTube or the content library. And we're encouraging you to share. If you want to share with everyone, you can submit them to us and we can upload them to the content library in one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, you're getting awesome feedback, I'm saying it's informative, excellent job. Thank you, thank you, awesome presentation. And one thing I did not share, and I was, let me go back to it, the Google for, the form, the Office 365 form, we actually created an activity in forms. Now, for whatever reason, my system isn't working with me, so I'll talk you through it. We, you can include a video, you can include actual passage on forms. Okay, here, here, here it is. And don't be afraid of trying the, my, the Office 365 suite. I was not very comfortable with it. However, I'm glad that I'm actually trying it. And also in Google Forms, they have, here it is already done. Um, in Office 365, sorry, the suite, there is a whiteboard that's free and the teacher can use this whiteboard. If you have a Ministry of Education email, you have access to Office 365. Now, this is a form that we created. Listen and learn. We down, we in, sorry, we embedded or uploaded a video from YouTube. The students can play the video. They can listen to the video again comprehension. They can see the words going across so they're reading and they're listening for those lower level students. And then we can ask them questions. What is the name of this animal? They can type in the question or it can be uh, um, multiple choice and they can choose it. Again, it depends on your grade level. It's nothing that is generic. You can um, make it authentic for the students that you have. And we know many of them are coming to us with gaps. 
here now, if they're having problems reading, so again, they are becoming more independent, they can click on this audio and, and I, I call her um, Sulen or Suri. Um, <laughs> she can read it for the students and you can add as many questions as you wish. What letter does this picture begin with? If you want to incorporate your phonics and phonemic awareness, they can bubble in that answer and then they submit it. Once they would have submitted it, it comes, oh, sorry, I'm so sorry, y'all aren't seeing my page. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, technology. Sorry, so sorry. Can you see it now? Talk to me, somebody. Hello? Okay, okay. Yes. I apologize. I apologize, and I'm here chatting away. So again, you can include the video, or you can have the picture, or you can put a passage here for your students to read, or you can put words and then have them put them in sentences. But this is all in Office 365 forms. You can make the best out of this. It's free, and you have access to it right now it's not something you have to sign up for so that was just something that we wanted to share with you that you can create and it also has quizzes i i mean we all have a quiz but this is an actual opportunity for our students to have an interactive activity so i'll go back to miss Starr with the questions sorry Yes, um, Deborah Clark is asking are all of the suggested resources compatible with the one-on-one -on -one system which uh, some of them, some of them are. Others would have to be embedded, not embedded, sorry, it, a link would have to be posted in the one-on-one -on -one system. And let's say with that um, Office 365 form that I created, I would copy it on the side when you have share, I would copy that, I would ask for them to copy the link click on copy and I would paste that link in my one-on-one um, -on -one system. The same thing with um, the Gen Z and whiteboard, you would just copy the link and you would post it in your one-on-one -on -one classroom or platform. Um, we've not gotten to the stage with one-on-one -on -one yet. Um, I spoke with Ms. Wilson, but we've not gotten there yet where we can embed it and it takes you directly there or it's within the system. The easiest way now is to create it in that um, particular platform and copy the link and it'll take the students directly there. The only thing now, if you have a Microsoft Office or Office 365 forms, the results of that quiz or whatever activity, it would be in your Office 365 data file and not in your one-on-one -on -one file. I hope that's that's clear. Yeah, I think that's quite clear. Um, Melody Newbold is asking if there are any resources available to teach writing hands-on. Scarlett. Hello. Hi. Sorry about that. Um, we're still searching for some to share with you. And as soon as we have some, we'll make them available to you. Don't worry. Like I said, we will not leave you just hanging. We are here to assist. And we'll do our best to ensure that whatever resources we find that are useful, that they're shared with you. Thank you. It seems as if we would have covered all of the questions. So I just want to say thank you so much, Mrs. Conliff and Ms. Martin for this power packed presentation. I am positive that the resources and strategies suggested and the sample lessons, oh my gosh, those sample lessons were amazing. I'm sure everything you provided have made us grade three teachers more comfortable and knowledgeable with integrating subjects and teaching the components of reading holistically. Again, thank you so much. And to you dynamic teachers, thank you for your attention and participation in this session. Before you leave, ensure that you have completed the evaluation form. I will put it in the chat once more.
continue to enjoy your day. Thank you so much. Thank you. I hope we answered. And if you still have concerns, you can post them on the, in the Padlet. Let me go back to the Padlet. If you still have concerns, I hope we would have answered a lot of the, or quell, uh, quelled a lot of the concerns that you would have had that you shared in the Padlet. Um, can you see the screen, Ms. Stoll, Ms. Conlet? The Padlet screen? We can see. Okay. So if you still have um, ideas or concerns, or if they were answered, you can post that as well in the Padlet. And this is an interface you can use with your students. They can actually type responses to you to a question that you would have posed, or they can ask questions. I hope it was useful and enjoy your day. <laughs>